Did you say you have one lens only? You're in the right place. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia and today we're gonna discuss travel photography, Iceland. I know you guys are really fond of Iceland and myself, I love ice too. So it's ice and fire. And the very first choice you need to take when you want to organize a travel to Iceland is whether you want to visit it over summertime or during winter. The main difference will be that over summertime you will be able to go all around the island, so also the northern part of the ring, while during winter time you will be only visiting the southern part, which is what I did. Very first thing you need to consider when you go there is that these are the conditions to be expected. So when you are driving, you just don't need a four-wheel drive. You need a four-wheel drive with the right tires, so don't go cheap when you're renting the car. But after that, eventually it opens up and it will lead you to visit beautiful, beautiful places, caves, waterfalls, icebergs, the black sand beach in Vik. And now we're gonna see together what are the challenges about the photography and what are the challenges about the conditions that you will meet if you go and visit Iceland. You ready? Let's go rolling. A little digression, I have to say that when I wanted to visit Iceland, that was supposed to be the very first trip with my brand new, at the time, Nikon D750. The purpose of the trip, apart from enjoying Iceland, was for me to compare the brand new full frame that I just purchased, at the time it was the Nikon D750, to the current Canon APS-C's DSLRs that I was still using as a travel camera. In the very end, the Nikon didn't get delivered on time, so I had to reinvent the purpose and I ended up comparing the Canon 600D with the Sony RX100 Mark IV that was still with me. So now we're gonna see a few examples of the same locations, the pictures that I took with the Canon and with the Sony, and can you tell which is which? So during daylight, it would not be that easy to spot the differences because despite the Sony has a very tiny sensor compared to the other camera I was using, well, with daylight, it's not a real challenge. The real challenges start when you start having low light situations. So we're gonna see together inside the cave or overnight which one performed better. Another thing to consider if you decide to visit Iceland during cold months is that the cold temperatures will suck all the juice out of your batteries so you will need spare batteries and keep them warm inside the jacket so the body temperature will keep them warm. This said, now we're gonna see a few examples of pictures that I've taken with the Canon mounted on a tripod, with the Sony handheld and with daylight overnight and with sunny conditions, with cloudy conditions, shooting at icebergs, shooting at open field. Iceland is a dream if you want to practice your landscape photography, but please also take into consideration that the white balancing is not so easy. So the very challenge over there being all white would be to have balanced pictures. So in this case, the very small sensor I had in the Sony led me to have bird highlights. So in this case, I should have underexposed a bit because once you burn the highlights then you cannot recover them in post so please take that into consideration if you're using a camera with a small sensor too apart from that also differences in focal length the sony has a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens of course with the crop factor that has to be taken into consideration and the canon 600d is an aps is the slr so it also has a crop factor less than the other one and I was using basically uh, two main lenses. One that was the all round 18 to 250, so it allowed me to reach for distance as well, but that was not so fast. And then I had with me another lens, which I borrowed from a friend, that was the 17 to 50 f2.8 from Sigma. It was a beautiful lens, it was a sharp lens, it was a bright lens, and I used it when I saw finally the Northern Lights. But then when I saw Northern Lights, in the end, I decided not to shoot pictures because I just wanted to enjoy the moment. The photos that you are seeing have been shot along the southern part of the ring. So I landed in Reykjavik 
and I drove all the way down to Vik and all the way east to Hofn. I visited caves, waterfalls and that bay where the iceberg finally go into the sea. And then on our way back we also visited uh, Green Davik, sorry if I mispronounced the name, which is that thermal area with very warm and very blue water. You can dive in.
Was it worth it? Definitely yes. I love travel photography. Uh, I prefer street photography, of course, because there's some actions. While with travel photography, most of the times you will find yourself snapping pictures of the landscape. So basically you are shooting postcards, but those are very good memories. And if you learn how to do that, how to use the light, how to use the framing to your advantage, please bring always a tripod with you because you will never know Traveling this war will be a very good journey, a very nice discovery. I can only recommend that you go out and discover the world. I visited almost 80 countries. From time to time, I will take pictures and photos and memories from my trips and share them with you. So please let me know in the comments down here if you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like it, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos to come. And I guess I will see you later. Thank you. Bye.